May 10th, 2011. This is today's climate change update. We are setting records here in Des Moines. Uh, we will have record heat here today. And uh, here it is, right about midnight central time when I'm recording this. And uh, windows open, fans blowing, and whew, man, it is hot. Fukushima, Japan, let's start there tonight, okay? This is on the RSOE website. Situation update number 105. Tokyo Electric Power Company on Monday detected radiation levels in the building housing the faltering number one reactor that far exceeded expected levels, reaching as high as 700 milliservers per hour. The utility firm said the latest readings for the troubled reactors has led Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency to embark on new radiation shielding measures so that work to bring the crisis under control can go ahead with risks of massive doses of deadly radiation poisoning hopefully, hopefully, being, le being lessened for the TEPCO workers and their affiliates as they attempt to embark on a massive project to install a nuclear fuel cooling system. TEPCO is currently mulling the idea to protect its workers, some who have only had a single medical check since March 11th. Triple disasters in May, <clears throat> and many who have been exposed to levels of radiation far against radioactive substances and increased safer mobility for the workers moving around the high radiation areas. An area with the double digit milliserver level, let alone three digit figures, is quite tough as a working environment. So we have to do the work by using some shielding. Uh, spokesman for the Nuclear Industry Safety Agency told a press conference. Uh, basically, <clears throat> they only tested these workers once since the disaster, and uh, yeah, they're getting to the point where they can't hide uh, this radiation sickness anymore, and of course the truth bubbles to the surface. Earth Changes, Scott.net. Uh, they've got a couple of pages of stuff tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. Here is a corporate fuck you from um, <laughs> the climate change people. A lawsuit filed to protect today's youth from climate change. And what could be a groundbreaking approach to using the legal system to prompt action on climate change. Attorneys are in the process of filing lawsuits in every state of the United States on behalf of young people whose futures will be affected by global warming. The effort, which is moving forward in courts in all 50 states, as well as the District of Columbia, is a, is a project of the youth-focused climate action group I Matter and its partner organizations. If attorneys fighting on the behalf of their young plaintiffs are successful, they could establish the atmosphere as a legally recognized public trust that cannot be overloaded with greenhouse gases by one generation at the expense of all future generations. So they can't get this through um, the politicians. They're going to throw this down your throat through the legal court systems. And we know how <clears throat> pristine our court system here is in the United States. So the lawyers have it. They've taken it from the politicians and they're pushing it through the courts now. This is your carbon tax bullshit. Uh, they've got a story on the volcanoes. Tungura continues to erupt. Tal grows increasingly restless. And explosions on Etna and more. And uh, this is basically, there are several volcanic activities going on right now. They've got a story, to, st another story, Deadly Silence on Fukushima. Uh, I received the following email a few days ago from a Russian nuclear physicist friend who was who is an expert on the kinds of gases being released at Fukushima. Here is what he wrote about Japan. The problem is that the reactor uses dirty fuel. It is a combination of plutonium and uranium. That's the MOX fuel. I suspect that the old fuel rods have been spread out due to the explosion and surrounding area is contaminated with plutonium, which means you can never return to this place again. 
and of course I will attach the links below. <clears throat> and they've got a story, mysterious main earthquakes caused by Ice Age rebound and of course all the glaciers had all that weight down uh, during the last Ice Age and that part of the United States is lifting back up or rebounding from um, the last Ice Age. Uh, close call. Ozone hole nearly opens over the Arctic. Now I've reported on this story below. Uh, the loss of ozone over the Antarctic has been well known since the late 70s when a major report exposed the crisis happening on the continent. But this spring, an Arctic hole in the ozone nearly opened up over northern United Kingdom, Scandinavia, and Russia. And I read reports up to 70% loss. Usually cold temperatures in the stratosphere, the second layer of Earth's atmosphere, caused, caused the Arctic near miss, according to a statement by Jonathan Sh Shanklin, the head meteorology and ozone monitoring of British Antarctic Survey. Most years, uh, he wrote, Arctic stratosphere is too warm for ozone depleting chemical reactions to take place. This year, however, temperatures have, have dove enough to destroy more than 40% of the Arctic ozone. And again, I've seen stories with it um, up to 70% losses. Uh, hundreds, hundreds of fish die in uh, Wakita Park Pond. Uh, now this is in Kansas and they're having the extreme heat and drought. And this is due to uh, the water evaporating. There's just not enough water for all the fish. Uh, Memphis Eyes Crest uh, New Orleans gets some flood help those along the Mississippi and the record flooding of course which is going on in the Mississippi Valley in the Ohio Valley here in the United States um, they are opening up some of the levees in, in uh, Louisiana and uh, relieving some of that pressure and of course Memphis is uh, in the brunt of the big swell right now and uh, they're having record flooding and they've got a fear piece, another one, Mississippi winners and losers as the Ar Army Corps opens up floodgates. And this is in Louisiana where they uh, open enough floodgates to alleviate some of the pressure because, of course, they don't want uh, the Mississippi River to reroute and um, backwater New Orleans and all that the economy that that would face, along with flooding in New Orleans due to this record flooding. Here's a story, a quake shifted Japan, towns now flood at high tide. When the water begins to trickle down the streets of her coastal neighborhood, uh, Yoshiko knows it's time to hurry home. Twice a day, the flow steadily increases until it is knee deep, carrying fish and debris by her front door and trapping people in their homes. Those still on the street slosh through the seawater in rubber boots or on bicycle. I look out the window and it's more like our houses are in the middle of the ocean who's moved in three years ago. Now this is definitely saying where where I've been saying that this is Japan sits on a very unstable shelf and that big 9.0 and those hundreds and over thousand earthquakes since um, that shelf is sliding down because they've already said that according to GPS uh, Japan is you know, 8, 10, 12 feet closer to the United States than it was before the quake happened. And uh, this is just another sign of saying, yes, that Japan is literally sliding. So uh, something to definitely look into and keep an eye on. The United States, Vermont, Lake Champlain floods slow to retreat. And, um, and again, they're saying it could, take, it could take weeks for this big in, in lake to... Uh, for the level to come down and we still have a bunch of uh, another big storm system coming in next week and a 6.3 <clears throat> in the in between uh, Australia and the Antarctica which is a pretty big quake for that area and again that is south of Australia in between Antarctica and Australia um, south of New Zealand actually 6.3 earthquake, that's kind of crazy. Over to the watchers, um, counterclockwise hurricane forming in the Atlantic, and again I just posted up a quick video about a strange vortex uh, developing in the Atlantic Ocean. 
I'm sure you've all watched at least by now I'll attach this video to that one Tropical Storm Airy nearing Fukushima nuclear power plant. Uh, this is the big alert I put out last night. So apparently people are taking um, under consideration um, all the nuclear fallout and the things that are going on in Fukushima right now on top of a tropical storm rolling right past. New sunspot group materializing now in the sun's northern hemisphere. After several days of deep quiet, solar activity might tuck upward this week with the emergence of a new sunspot group materializing now in the sun's northern hemisphere. And again, these have the ability to produce CMEs and blah blah blah, and, and uh, we've been watching the sun gear up towards solar maximum for, uh, for a little while now. And they've got this is where I got the strange vortex forming over the Atlantic story and over to the extinction protocol cosmic ray levels are rising again NASA set to find out why how are they set to find out why then when they've been shutting everything down uh, they are energetically charged subatomic particles and their origins are about as mysterious as their long-term effect on life and process of both on Earth and the Sun. Our solar system is being bombarded by these particles but from some unknown origin. Evidence that they are streaming from somewhere outside our solar system is indicative of the fact that cosmic radiation levels spike every time the solar winds or more importantly the heliosphere, hel heliosphere the protected bubble which surrounds our solar system deflates. We likely have the remnants of a supernova or dark matter in our, on our doorstep and its effects on Earth could become more pronounced with time. A device due to launch aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavour from Florida on Friday is designed to give scientists their first detailed study of the electrics, electrically charged particles streaming through the cosmos. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this might have to do with a brown dwarf star in the neighborhood. But uh, that's just me. I have no proof. And then they've finally got a story. Tectonic plate movements create rippling quakes across the Pacific Ocean. And uh, they're New Zealand beginning with a 5.0 magnitude quake on South Island. New Zealand's series of movements along tectonic plates have created a succession of moderate quakes. A 6.3 I just told you about. A 5.8 in the Philippines. A 5.8 off the coast of Honshu, Japan, and that's on that ledge, and a 4.9 in Alaska, and a 5.9 in Vanuatu. And uh, so again, we had some, some pretty sizable earthquakes today. That is about all I have for you today. Of course, if I missed anything, please um, leave your comments or attach your videos below. Uh, thanks for all your help, and enjoy what you can, everybody. Stay cool. It's hot.